Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on September 27th, 2023. Welcome to another Surviving Day on the Planet. Welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well earthquakes, volcanoes, and a look at world weather. Always starting out here looking at the last 48 hours of sun imagery provided to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. Mixed here with Daily Events Worldwide. Thank you all for watching. We have nine active sunspot regions to talk about, and four of them are pretty big. Having a look at the last 48 hours incoming, so this is cresting from behind the sun, coming into an earth-facing view. We do have an unstable sunspot position in the southern hemisphere. And then looking at the outgoing, we did have a little event on the surface of the sun there, plasma ejection happening in between sunspot regions there. Plasma of prominence lifting from the southern hemisphere. Having a look at a multi-spectrum northern hemisphere darkened regions. Those are our coronal holes. And it looks like there is one developing in the equatorial region in the last few images. Just pointing out here all of the most recent events on our sun. Nothing major has been thwarted our way. We do still have some energy space weather events that are predicted for the beginning of October. Having a look at another light here, 193 angstroms. You can see in the last few images, the equatorial Earth-facing sunspot region amongst the nine regions. A couple puffs indeed, very active sun. Having a look at sunspots in action here. Space weather conditions. Currently, there are none. Solar winds coming in at 504 kilometers per second. Solar X-ray flux remains in a lowered C-class range. Solar proton flux is low and geomagnetic activity is low as well. Having a look here at the Enlil Space Prediction Spiral brought to you by ISWA. Showing all of the sun's energy and CMEs that are heading towards Earth, which is the yellow circle on the right-hand side of the inner circle, which is our sun. Showing a CME taking off towards Mercury. Having a look at the last 48 hours at SOHO imagery. This is where they put a disk in front of our sun and we're able to see all of the cosmic energy leaving the surface in a possible Earth fashion. Let's get to earthquakes here the last 24 hours as we are up in over 200 earthquakes according to USGS. We did have a sizable 5.1 earthquake. The Aleutian Islands region, this is where we've had an active Shishaldan volcano and as well Katmai. 5.4 earthquake here. This is the largest last 24 hours. Northeast Sumatra, Indian Plate. And then we saw some pretty deep earthquake today. Deep Earthquake activity today in Fiji, 613 kilometer depth, 4.6 or 4.8 in magnitude, and as well a 4.2 reported there in Takaka, New Zealand, 4.5 earthquake here, Pacific Antarctic Ridge, quiet through the South American plate, and as well as Central America, way too quiet for my liking, still under an earthquake watch, especially with that most recent 613 kilometer depth earthquake in Fiji. We can always expect a larger shallower earthquake to follow these deep tectonic events. So heads up. Having a look at USGS reporting here, 206 earthquakes the past 24 hours. Minor activity up into the Pacific Northwest, Seattle, and as well northwest of uh, Yellowstone region and into Montana, Swan Lake, Largest earthquake across North American soil was a 3.6 Walker, California. And as well, minor activity into Oklahoma and into the New Madrid, Tennessee, reporting a 1.9. Minor activity at best. But then uh, increasing activity here through Puerto Rico on the North Shore. So watch for a sizable activity more sizable activity to come through the region. I do believe Central America up into North America expecting a large earthquake. 
So heads up, stay safe, stay aware, prepared, and just be ready. That's what this is all about. Having a look at the last seven days for shakers across the world, we have seen a lot of deep earthquakes, which are all the elevated rings showing the depth, and we have not seen a six-pointer. Expecting something big. Heads up. Much love. And thanks for watching. Having a look at Pacific Disaster Center, showing the most recent satellite imagery and pointing out the most recent volcanoes getting updated today. We've got Ibu in Indonesia. As well, Reventador in Ecuador. Senge in Ecuador, Nevada's de Ruiz, Colombia. Katmai in the United States. That is through the Aleutian Islands. Alaska. Towards Anchorage. Going to have a quick look here on the map, looking at Katmai and as well Shishaldin Volcano, both of them showing signs of activity starting three days ago. Shishaldin did, so that's most likely where all of this SO2 is coming from, which I shared with you yesterday, and it's gotten even bigger today, so stay tuned. We're just looking here at satellite imagery as there is a large low through the North Pacific right now, heading into the Bering Strait. There's also a large low off the coast of British Columbia that has brought in lots of much needed moisture for parts of northern BC and Alberta. And as well, drought stricken through Washington, Wenatchee Reserve area. They got some moisture as well the last few days with that big system. Having a look here at the rest of the world, no major typhoons to talk about through the Pacific. And nothing major has formed just yet with the tropical systems heading through the Atlantic. Look at the size of these low pressure systems in the southern hemisphere. Parts of Ghana recording some pretty massive flooding. Lots of people and villagers displaced. Thoughts and prayers going out to everybody affected by natural disasters. Weather, earthquakes, volcanoes. And as well as space weather, as we just went through a geomagnetic storm the last three days. And as well, I wanted to share here the updated imagery of forecast models for SO2. As you can see, that plume that I was showing last night has gotten a lot bigger, and there are a lot of culprits. We've got Mexico, we've got California, but particularly we've got Katmai a volcano and as well Shishaldin volcano through Alaska both updated three days ago lots of SO2 into our atmosphere reports of a pyroclastic cloud reaching 35,000 feet from the Shishaldin volcano and that was two or three days ago so that makes sense now as to where all this SO2 is coming from Particulars are up in over 136 parts per million. And then having a look here at the rest of the world versus a very toxic uh, Northeast Pacific Ocean. Having a look here at Kamchatka, which is Eastern Russia, multiple active volcanoes through the region. Lots of SO2 constantly coming from these guys we also do have a heat wave that is going to be into effect for most of north america as we've got quite a bit of tropical moisture here funneling straight north as far as alaska and up into northwest territories it will be warm and humidity levels will be high but this will pretty much be the last time as winter is right around the corner and there's a big low developing north of Hudson Bay, setting up 2023's winter polar vortex. So stay tuned as it will be sharing all of that data as well with you. Winds at our upper level stream showing out well, and pointing out showing our polar vortex, both the northern and southern hemisphere. So much love, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Stay tuned because hot temperatures are coming and then so is the snow as reported yesterday. Much love. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily do. Bye-bye now.
you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.